Welcome to the Bible Truth Commentary. I'm your host, Dr. Matthew Mahan. These broadcasts are designed to provide Bible-believing students and teachers with concise verse-by-verse -verse teaching from the plain text of the King James Bible. We resume our study of the book of the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 23. <clears throat> now, in this chapter, we come to the 11th and final burden against the nations. These burdens began with chapter 13 and end here with chapter 23. The nations linked in this string of burdens were nations with whom Judah had to do at, at that time when Isaiah prophesied and contained both historic information associated uh, with that time in Israel's lifeline, as well as prophetic material uh, for that part of the world around Israel in the last days prior to the return of Christ at the second advent. Each one of these burdens presents to us some principle, philosophy, or system which God must judge. First of all, Babylon represents false religion and idolatry. Second, the land of promise represents true religion, which has become apostate. Three, Moab represents formal religion that has a form of godliness but denies the power thereof. Four, Damascus represents compromise. Five, Ethiopia represents missions. Six, Egypt represents the world, as it always does. Seventh, Persia represents luxury. Edom represents the flesh. Nine, Arabia represents war. Ten, the Valley of Vision, or Jerusalem, represents politics. Eleven, Tyre, finally, which is what we will be looking at today, represents commercialism, that is, big business, which is the sin of America today. It represents world trade with all of its wickedness, wealth, pride, humiliation, uh, and, and I have to add corruption, as it becomes a slave of the God of this world. Now, this chapter addresses the burden of Tyre and the effect of its fall on its commercial empire. Tyre is located on the Phoenician coast, about 25 miles south of Sidon and 35 miles north of Carmel. So I got a page out of my Bible, which fell out. And uh, right here, you'll see this uh, Carmel kind of sticking out here and uh, about uh, uh, 25 miles um, uh, well, you've got Tyre and Sidon. I might have to put my glasses on to see this. Um, I'll hold this right up here where you can see it. You got Sidon, or Zidon, is clear up here in the top. See that up there? You see see a Galilee, and you've got Israel down here. This is during the time of the conquest, okay? And you've got Sidon way up here. You've got Tyre here, and then you've got Carmel pointing out right here, all right? And uh, then in Christ's time, you know, they called this Phoenicia. And here again is Carmel. And um, this is uh, Ptolemaeus, I think. Yeah, Ptolemaeus. And then up here is Tyre, and up here is Sidon. And then you've got Zarephath in between there, which is also mentioned in the New Testament. And, you know, Jesus did go to the coast of Tyre and Sidon at one point in his ministry, which you read about. We'll talk about that some. Okay, so, uh, again, it's located on the Phoenician coast about 25 miles south of Sidon. So Sidon's up top. Sidon's actually the mother colony. And then uh, Tyre uh, 25 miles south of there, and then 35 miles south of Tyre is Carmel that kind of points out there, all right, and uh, that, that, I think that's the land of Caleb. Anyway, the first time it meant, it's mentioned in the book of, um, uh, in the book, of, in the Bible, is men it's mentioned in the book of Joshua at the time that the land was conquested, and uh, Josh, it's mentioned in Joshua 19.29, it was the principal ancient seaport with two harbor, harbors and was a wealthy commercial city trading by sea throughout and beyond the Mediterranean Sea. So it had tremendous influence and power in its time. H.A. Ironside, in his The Book of Isaiah, page 134, states, quote, Tyre speaks of the world as a great commercial system where men through material pursuits seek to enrich themselves reveling in every kind of luxury and in forgetfulness of God, unquote. 
Recall that Hiram, king of Tyre, loved King David. And you, this is from the book of Kings, if, if you've read the book of Kings. And there was a king, uh, king of Tyre, whose name was Hiram, and he loved David. And he helped his son Solomon in making provisions to build a temple, including raft floats of cedar wood and fir. We read about that in 1 Kings 5, to help and provide materials for Solomon to build the temple. Tyre is one of the nations mentioned in Jeremiah chapter 25 that will come under God's judgment during the 70-year captivity of Judah. Tyrus is said to be one of those nations that will drink of the cup of God's wrath at his hand. More details uh, information on this is given in Ezekiel chapter 26 and Ezekiel chapter 27, and other places such as the book of Amos and Zechariah. Now, the prophecies here in Isaiah 23 reach to and beyond the fall of this great trading empire, and extending to the time when the great world system will be judged and subjected to the rule and reign of Christ when he returns at the second advent. So the material is mostly uh, historical. However, there is, as usual, as is the style of Isaiah, there's prophetic material mixed in too. Much of it dealing with the time of the second advent. All right, let's start reading. This is Isaiah chapter 23, if you want to follow along, and we'll pick up with verse 1. <clears throat> the burden of Tyre, how ye ships of Tarshish, for it is laid waste, so that there is no house, no entering in. From the land of Chittim it is revealed to them. Be still, ye inhabitants of the isle, thou whom the merchants of Zidon that pass over the sea have replenished, and by great waters the seed of Sihor the harvest of the river is her revenue, and she is a mart of the nations. Verse 4, Be thou ashamed, O Zidon, for the sea hath spoken, even the strength of the sea, saying, I travail not, nor bring forth children, neither do I nourish up young men, nor bring up virgins. As at the report concerning Egypt, so shall they be sorely pained at the report of Tyre. Pass ye over to Tarshish, howl ye inhabitants of the isle, is this your joyous city whose antiquity is of ancient day days? Her own feet shall carry her afar off to sojourn. Who hath taken this counsel against Tyre, the crowning city, whose merchants are princes, whose traffickers are the honorable of the earth? The Lord of hosts hath proposed it, to stain the pride of all glory and to bring into contempt all the honorable of the earth. Pass through thy land as a river, O daughter of Tarshish, there is no more strength. He stretcheth out his hand over the sea. He shook the kingdoms. The Lord hath given a commandment against the merchant city to destroy the strongholds thereof. And he said, Thou shalt no more rejoice, O thou oppressed virgin daughter of Zidon. Arise, pass over to Chittim. There also shalt thou have no rest. <clears throat> Behold, the land of the Chaldeans. This people was not till the Assyrian found it for them that dwell in the wilderness. They set up the towers thereof. They raised up the palaces thereof. And he brought it to ruin. Howl, ye ships of Tarshish, for your strength is laid waste. And it shall come to pass in that day, you catch, that, catch that expression. If you've been following these broadcasts, that should perk you up. And it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre shall be forgotten 70 years, according to the day of one king, after the end of 70 years shall Tyre sing as an harlot. Take in harp, go about the city, thou harlot that hast been forgotten. Make sweet melody, sing many songs, that thou mayest be remembered. All right, so that was verses 1 through 16 of Isaiah 23. Now, verses 1 through 14 describe the destruction of Tyre by Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. It is described at least 120 years before its accomplishment, which is another amazing uh, thing about the Bible and about biblical prophecy that no other book in the world can do, and it does so, so many times. At least 120 years before its accomplishment, at a period when the Tyrians, 
the people of Tyre, the Tyrians, were in great perplexity and the Babylonians in abject subjection to the Assyrian Empire. So far before anybody could really see what was going to happen, Babylon wasn't even a power yet, okay? Babylon was still cringing under the uh, influence of the kingdom of Assyria at this time, <coughs> which came forth from the Chaldeans. We'll talk about this more. But th these these world power developments were too far off in the future for Isaiah to be able to understand with his natural mind. It had to be by revelation that Isaiah was able to foresee these judgments taking place under the kingdom of Babylon. To be able to pr predict or foretell an event of this magnitude, therefore, would be very unlikely under the present circumstances of Isaiah's day and under the situations under which he prophesied. In Ezekiel 26, 4, we're told that the old city of Tyre would be scraped. When Alexander the Great came through Phoenicia, he scraped the ancient site of Tyre to make a causeway to the island to conquer it. In verses 15 through 17, we're told how Tyre will recover its splendor at the end of 70 years, which would be the days of one king representing a kingdom that is Babylon, just like Jerusalem, just like Judea, okay? The same period of time, the 70-year captivity that uh, Judea would fall under as well. One, um, um, the duration of the Babylonians' empire uh, and power uh, was 70 years, and this fits the prophecy for in 70 years, Tyre re recovered its glory, just like the Bible says. The Bible's always right, folks. I mean, you can you can bank on it. You know, people tell me, you know, they've got a problem with the Bible or there's, there's this uh, uh, apparent contradiction. I do a little bit of study, and you know what? If you open up your heart, the Holy Spirit will clear it up for you. He always does. I've seen it happen so many times. Tyre is the Greek word for tsor, which means rock. It is probably so named because it is a city built on a rock in the sea off the coast of the Mediterranean. It's a seaport, and after the kingdom of Babylon and Persia rose and fell, it was attacked by Alexander the Great during the Grecian Empire. Since Tyre was besieged more than once, it is impossible, impossible to be sure of which siege exactly is described here. But the best guess would be, it'd be it would be the one under Alexander because of the scraping. and Anyway, the cross-referencing, but we don't really know for sure. The first siege was by Shalmaneser, king of Assyria. The second was by Nebuchadnezzar. The third was by Alexander the Great, who succeeded in conquering it and destroying it after seven months in 332 BC. Then it was besieged by the Syrian king Antigonus and by the crusaders in the Dark Ages. Tyre colonized many commercial seaports, including Tarshish. The commercial ships from Tarshish, and that would be Spain, went to Tyre. Um, and we, I'll cross-reference you to Ezekiel 27, 12 to 15. Tarshish in the Bible is similar to Babylon. <clears throat> Here, according to the first verse, Tyre is laid waste. The vision begins with a description of the Phoenician trading fleet returning to the seaport of Tyre. And it has been revealed to them from the land of Chittim, that's also called Kittim in the Bible, that Tyre had been destroyed and that there was no house left to inhabit. So the prophecy states that they will howl. The burden of Tyre, howl, ye ships of Tarshish, verse 1. For it is laid waste, so that there is no house, no entering in from the land of Chittim. It is revealed to them. So as they sail back, they are received by this city that they have heard has been laid waste, with no house to inhabit. So the picture here we have here is of ships coming home from Tarshish to Tyre, only to find that Tyre has been destroyed and is no longer the commercial center. Some say Chittim is Greece, and others say it is Cyprus. If, if it's an isle, verse 2, it's probably Cyprus. Verse 2 says, Be still, ye inhabitants of the isle, thou whom the merchants of Zidon that pass over the sea have replenished. 
So um, now Harry Baltima in his commentary on Isaiah says that Chittim is more than Cyprus, but includes the entire Mediterranean coast of Europe. See Ezekiel 37.3 and 30, uh, 27.3, 27.8 and 27.23. Zidon, a verse 2, located about 27 miles up the Mediterranean coast from Tyre, was made rich by Tyrus, but was the principal city until about 1000 BC. Zidon, uh, or Sidon, is about 30 miles north of Tyre along the coast and is the only city, uh, it's, the, it's the only city, um, excuse me, the oldest city of Phoenicia. Tyre and Zidon were the two leading uh, cities of the Phoenicians. So the destruction of Tyre was foretold and accordingly fulfilled. But the destruction of Sidon was not foretold, and the city still stands today. Now, how, how marvelous and exact is the word of God? The word marked in verse 3 is a word that's still used. Verse 3, and by great waters, the seed of Sihor, the harvest of the river, is her revenue, and she is a mart of many nations. Very familiar term, even in modern English. Almost every major town in America has a Kmart or a Walmart or both. And the word Sihor means black and trouble. It refers to the silt that came from the upper Nile and fertilized the Nile Delta during flooding time. The seed of Sihor, mentioned in verse 3, is a reference to the grain fetched from there. The verse also mentions the harvest of the river, because this isle marked of the nations got rich from the harvest of the river and its fish. That would be the River Nile. This, com this commerce flowed through the port of Tyre. Tyre was the center of all of this commerce, all of from coming up from Egypt all the way out to Spain, covering the Mediterranean Sea and beyond. Tyre would certainly be affected by the elimination of this source of wealth as well. In the next verse, verse 4, something has gone wrong with the sea. So let's read verse 4. Be thou ashamed, O Zidon. Now, Zidon is the sister country, the mother, mother city. Be thou ashamed, O Zidon, for the sea hath spoken even the strength of the sea, saying, I travail not, nor bring forth children, neither do I nourish up young men, nor bring up virgins. So again, Zidon was Tyre's mother. Though Tyre eventually surpassed Zidon in prosperity and in establishing flourishing colonies in Africa and Europe. So first there was Zidon, then Tyre was, was uh, colonized, <clears throat> and then Tyre began, began to be the, the, the strongest of the two cities and began to colonize Africa and Europe and all over the Mediterranean. It became a central seaport and surpassed Zidon in its power and influence. So these colonies are referred to in this verse as children. And the young man could be a reference to the sailors who sailed on the Mediterranean Sea, and her virgins possibly could be the new colonies in her sphere of influence. When Alexander the Great came, he attacked both Tyre and Egypt. This would be the, quote, report of verse 5. So let's read verse 5. As at the report concerning Egypt, so shall they be sorely pained at the report of Tyre. The tidings of the fall of Tyre would bring great consternation upon the nations of Egypt, both because of the loss of trade and commerce, as well as the threat of conquest by a power great enough to take Tyre and potentially Egypt as well with it. <clears throat> as foretold in verse 6, the Tyrians were forced to flee to their own colonies. And these included Carthage, distant Tarshish, or Spain, and elsewhere under the siege of Nebuchadnezzar, and also during the conquest by Alexander. Verse 6, pass ye over to Tarshish, howl ye inhabitants of the isle. Now, you know, that's still a long way. That's a big area all the way to Spain, covering the whole Mediterranean Sea. He says, pass ye over. Why? They have no place to live. Pass ye over to Tarshish. Howl, ye inhabitants of the isle. 
Verse 7 describes the city as a joyous city of antiquity. Any great commercial center is a fun center for amusement and joyous times. Verse 7, is this your joyous city whose antiquity is of ancient days? Her own feet shall carry her afar off to sojourn. sojourn. Okay, so instead of indulging the flesh, they will flee to distant Greece, Sicily, Corsica, Spain, and Africa. So uh, when it says her feet shall carry her afar off, I think there we get kind of the, um, the description of having to flee. Even if it's by sea, we get this description of having to flee hastily. Um, the next two verses, so, you know, she's, she's dispersed um, amongst these uh, uh, children nations that uh, uh, she colonized in, in or cities, these, these sister, these children cities that she has colonized and influenced. She's fleeing to these. She has nowhere else to go. Now, the next two verses show how God purposed this judgment, even though for a while Tyre would be the crowning city with the honorable and princes as her proud merchants. But now God has a purpose in this judgment. Verse 8 and 9. Let's read these. Isaiah 23, 8 and 9. Who hath taken this counsel against Tyre, the crowning city, whose merchants are princes? You know, like even the merchants are like princes, they're like little kings, you know. Whose traffickers are the honorable of the earth. The Lord of hosts hath purposed it to stain the pride of all glory and to bring into contempt all the honorable of the earth. Apparently these people got too big. God felt the need to humble them. So instead of persisting in her pride and glory, God will bring her into contempt and take away her strength. God will do that sometimes. He knows what he's doing. <clears throat> In verse 10, the colony of Tarshish is now free to do as she pleases, like the Nile overflowing its banks. And that's the, uh, um, th that's the, um, I guess say symbolism, but that's the the picture that's being painted here. Okay, verse ten: Pass through thy land as a river, O daughter of Tarshish. There is no more strength. So Tyre has fallen and is no longer able to exert her influence over such nations as Tarshish. In verse eleven, the sea that the Lord is reaching over to shake the kingdoms, uh, and it can only be the Mediterranean. He stretcheth out his hand over the sea. He shook the nations. The Lord hath given a commandment against the merchant city to destroy the strongholds thereof, which he certainly did do. Thus the fall of Tyre had a profound effect over the other kingdoms under its commercial influence. Verse 12, And he said, Thou shalt no more rejoice, O thou oppressed virgin, daughter of Zidon. Arise, pass over to Chittim. There also shalt thou have no rest. In verse 12, Spain, that is Tarshish, and Tyre are said to be the daughter of, the, of Zidon, or the colonization. Um, it's a colony of, of originally of Zidon, as we said. But God will deal with Tarshish and Tyre, just like he dealt with the Chaldeans and the Assyrians. Verse 13, Behold the land of the Chaldeans. This people was not, till the Assyrian founded it. For them that dwell in the wilderness, they set up the towers thereof. They raised up the palaces thereof, and he brought it to ruin. So a reminder to the enduring and powerful kingdom of Tyre, uh, that they would be crushed by what was a young upstart group of people, the Chaldeans, uh, that would quick, quickly grow into the Assyrian Empire. And then from the Assyrian Empire, then uh, would be the overshadowing presence of the looming Babylonian kingdom, uh, starting from its little beginning with the Chaldeans. Just a reminder to them uh, to, to the Tyrians that, hey, nothing is permanent and God can change things around pretty quickly. That's a good reminder to us in, in the world in which we live in today. It seems like nothing is stable these days, although we kind of um, feel like we're secure, but God can turn things uh, on a dime. 
All right, verse 14. Howl, ye ships of Tarshish, for your strength is laid waste. Hey, you no longer have the kingdom of Tyre to come and support you, Tarshish. Verse 14 brings us full circle to the beginning of this prophecy at verse 1, describing the lamentation the ships of Tarshish will make as a result of Tyre. Remember, it said there in verse 1, the burden of Tyre, howl, ye ships of Tarshish. So we come full circle to verse 14, howl, ye ships of Tarshish, for your strength is laid waste. Verse 1, the burden of Tyre, howl, ye ships of Tarshish, for it is laid waste so that there is no house, no entering in from the land of Chittim. It is revealed to them. They're coming back from Tarshish. Oh, they, they were the great power of the sea. They were the great commerce and wealth and the bringers of, 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 of uh, merchandise. And they were powerful and strong princes and, and influential. And now coming back from Tarsus, they've been brought to naught. Notice the similarity to verse 14. How ye ships of Tarsus, for your strength is laid waste. All right now, Ezekiel 26, 15 to 18 is an excellent commentary on this verse, as well as this description of the fall of Tyre. So let me read. This is from, Isaiah, from Ezekiel 26, 15 to 18. Thus saith the Lord God to Tyrus, Shall not the isles shake at the sound of thy fall? When the wounded cry, when the slaughter is made in the midst of thee, then all the princes of the sea shall come down from their thrones and lay away their robes and put off their broidered garments. They shall clothe themselves with trembling. They shall sit upon the ground and shall tremble at every moment and be astonished at thee. And they shall take up a lamentation for thee and say to thee, How art thou destroyed? That was inhabited of seafaring men, the renowned city. Doesn't that sound a lot like Babylon? Babylon the Great is fallen in Revelation 17 and 18, which was strong in the sea. She and her inhabitants, which caused their terror to be on all that haunt it. Now shall the isles tremble in the day of thy fall. Yea, the isles that are in the sea shall be troubled at thy departure. So now independently, and in a different place, and at a different time, God shows Ezekiel the same exact thing. And there's a reason why God does that. Well, first of all, because it's important. <laughs> so he repeats it. Second, he wanted them to know. And third, because it's so. Because the Bible really is able to foretell these events even from different prophets at different times and different places. Now, according to verse 15, Tyre would lose its former, former renown and go into obscurity. 15, and it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre shall be forgotten 70 years. According to the days of one king, after the end of 70 years shall Tyre sing as an harlot. Now, let me see if we can explain this verse uh, and, and give it its proper interpretation. Along with Babylon, she would go into captivity 70 years. Because Babylon, you remember, Babylon came up against Jerusalem, too, and took it. And for 70 years, Judea was in captivity to Babylon. But after 70 years, the captivity ended, and she returned back to her land. During this same time and under this same kingdom, there was also a 70-year captivity of um, Tyre. So along with Babylon, she would go into captivity 70 years, along with Judea. But like Israel, after the 70 years would be liberated, along with the rest of the conquered people, uh, she would be liberated. So, verse 16 says, Take and harp, go about the city, thou harlot, that, that hast been forgotten. Make sweet melodies, sing many songs, that thou mayest be remembered. Now, keep in mind that the use of this term harlot has to do with her idolatry and her um, selling of herself for her great wealth. Merrill Unger, I'm going to give you a quote from his um, uh, commentary on the Old Testament, uh, I guess it'd be volume 2, page 1204. Merrill Unger says the following, quote, The figure of a harlotry expressing forgetfulness of God and selfish preoccupation with worldly gain appropriately describes covetousness, which was the besetting sin of Tyre and is closely allied with idolatry 
and licentiousness, cross-referencing Ephesians 5.5 5 and Colossians 3.5, close quote. So that's a good comment. I like that. I wanted to share that with you. Verse 17, And it shall come to pass after the end of 70 years that the Lord will visit Tyre, and she shall return to her hire, and shall commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world upon the face of the earth. Again, man, that sounds so much like Babylon uh, in the book of Revelation. You know, in the book of Revelation, you're taken all the way through the tribulation four times. You're taken through with uh, seals, trumpets, and then vials all the way through. And then the final time that you're taken all the way to the end and to the second advent is through Mystery Babylon the Great. And when Babylon is fallen and judged, Jesus comes back and sets up his kingdom. And all of this ungodliness and idolatry goes away and God repurposes the wealth of the world so that the entire world doesn't just uh, exploit one another, but benefits from it. Some people have tried to enforce communism to do the same thing, but communism cannot do the same thing because it's not a free enterprise system. But I don't want to get off in all that, okay? You say, but didn't the disciples, didn't they have all things common? Yes, they did because they were preparing their hearts for the kingdom of Israel with a literal, visible, physical Jewish king, the Lord Jesus Christ, a political system with Christ. They were still expecting Christ to come back and set up his kingdom in Jerusalem. And so they had all things common uh, because that was the best way to to handle things during that time when, when the kingdom was imminent. But that's not a commandment for all of us to do, folks. All right, so God's going to visit Tyre, not in wrath, but in mercy. So look at this. I mean, God is so good. Verse 18, and her merchandise and her hire shall be holiness to the Lord. We're talking about now, did this ever happen? Was the merchandise and hire of Tyre ever holiness unto the Lord? I trow not. However, there will be a day, because this hasn't been fulfilled yet. There will be a future time when God is going to repurpose. You, you ever read over there? You think about this now. Matthew 25, the judgment of the nations. When the Son of Man shall come and all his holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and then shall be gathered before him all the nations and he shall uh, separate them one from, from another as a shepherd divides the sheep from the ghost. What do you think that is? It's not a judgment of individuals, folks. It's a judgment of nations. What's the criteria by which those nations will be judged? How they treated the Jew? When would that be? During the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble. There are going to be certain nations that stand Israel. Hey, you know, stand with Israel. You know what America is supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be standing by Israel. How do you think God is going to treat America? Well, it depends a lot on how she treats the nation of Israel, doesn't it? Think about that now. The judgment of the nations has to do with nations. Tyre is going to be one of those nations that apparently makes it through the judgment of the nations, comes over on the other side, tri uh, through the tribulation, Jesus sets up his kingdom, and under Israel, as the head of the nations, comes all the other nations of the world that flow into Mount Zion, and Zidon is going to be one of those nations, and her enrichment is going to be a blessing to the world and to the Jew during that time. That's the picture you get. You see, where'd you get that from, Brother Mahan? Ah, from reading the scriptures. Because when you read the scriptures, they'll come together for you, my friend. So, again, read in verse 18, and her merchandise and her hire shall be holiness to the Lord. Hadn't happened yet. It's going to, though. It shall not be treasured nor laid up for her merchandise shall be for them that dwell before the Lord. See that? They're going to bring their glory up into Zion. And it says to eat sufficiently and for durable clothing. So for the first year of Nebuchadnezzar to the taking of Babylon by Cyrus, the Mede, Cyrus the Mede, that period of time was 70 years. It was a 70 year captivity. And Zidon came under that captivity. Nebuchadnezzar, and his son, evil Merodach, and his grandson, Belshazzar, 
formed the whole dynasty. We read about this in Jeremiah 25, 11, Jeremiah 25, 12, Jeremiah 27, 7, and Jeremiah 29, 10. Then after the 70 years, the subjected nations would return to liberty. Commerce would once again return to Tyre and she would come once again uh, to her former state of committing fornication with the kingdoms of the world. Not yet to be holiness unto the Lord, not until she passes through the judgment of the nations under the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes and sits on the throne of his glory per Matthew 25, after the tribulation. Oh, there's only one way, folks. There's only one way to make the Bible fit together, and that's with the pre-tribulation rapture, the tribulation being the 70th week of Daniel, and with the pre-millennial return of the Lord Jesus Christ and the thousand-year millennial reign of Christ. If you don't have your Bible set up that way, folks, you're just going to be spiritualizing and spiritualizing and spiritualizing away everything in the Bible that's literal until you have no clue what to spiritualize and what not to spiritualize. You know what? The Bible's literal. Oh, there's a few places where you have spiritual language and symbolic language, but it's pretty clear from the context. Get your Bible right. You got to get your Bible right. Now, it's interesting to note, as evidence in verse 17, the connection between covetousness, idolatry, and licentiousness, which is a certainly a biblical spiritual um, theme. And we read about that in Ephesians 5.5. 5. I'm not going to read the verses for you. Ephesians 5.5, 5, Colossians 3.5, Isaiah 2, 6-8, and Isaiah 2.16. And there's this forever connection between covetousness idolatry and licentiousness, wanting things, then putting those things ahead of God, right? And then once you do that, then you just abandon yourself to whatever your little wicked heart wants to do. That's the steps. Verse 17, and it shall come to pass after the end of 70 years that the Lord will visit Tyre and she shall, she shall turn to her higher and shall commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world, just like Babylon in the last days, and upon the face of the earth. You say, well, Brother Man, by the way, what is Babylon of the last days? Well, you know, we've got our ideas and theories. Uh, Clarence Larkin um, talked about the rebuilding of Babylon and the commercial Babylon and the religious Babylon. Others say that, you know, the religious Babylon is the Roman Catholic Church because of the colors and the martyrdom and the... And the um, the woman and the cup, and, and, and there are a lot of parallels, you know. But you know what? Babylon, Babylon is bigger. Babylon permeates just about everything in world history, all the way back to the time of Nimrod. If I can re recommend a book to you, read uh, Hislop's The Two Babylons. That'll open your eyes about a lot of things if you haven't read it yet. All right, anyway, after the Babylonian dynasty, she's going to come back. Tyre was rebuilt, right, after the 70 years and after the Babylonian dynasty, and she's going to return, and she's going to be um, revived. So Tyre was rebuilt, and also it was rebuilt after the destruction under Alexander. The language in this verse closely, and by the way, she been rebuilt after the uh, return of Christ, too. The language in this verse closely resembles Babylon of the last days, as I've said many times, especially commercial Babylon representing the culmination of the world's commercial prominence among the kingdoms of the world prior to the second advent of Christ. All right, verse 18 indicates that Tyre will be a millennial nation and that her hire and merchandise will undergo transformation, at which time it will be set apart to God's purpose and become holy. This is nothing short of the mar a marvelous spectacle of the grace of God, which knows no bounds. God does what he pleases in the kingdoms and affairs of man. Thank God for that. Well, where would we be with the Lord without the Lord anyhow? All right, verse 18, and her merchandise and her hire shall be holiness to the Lord. It shall not be treasured nor laid up, for her merchandise shall be for them that dwell before the Lord to eat sufficiently and for durable clothing. So the, um, just by way of mention, 
the Lord Jesus Christ passed through this area in Matthew 15, 21, through Tyre and Sidon, and so did the Apostle Paul in Acts 21, 3 through 6, and in Acts 27, 3. We also read in Psalm 45, 12, that she will be one of the nations present in the millennium. So here's another verse that talks about her presence in the millennium. That completes our study of the judgment on Tyre with its commercial prosperity and influence over world commerce, spanning the entire Mediterranean Sea and beyond, as well as its restoration at the end of the 70 years, just like Judah was, and the glimpse into its future relationship with Israel and her Messiah during the millennial reign of Christ. This also brings us to the end of this series of burdens on which these various nations in chapters 13 through 23 will pass through during this time when God brings judgment upon Judah through the um, power of Babylon. Um, in the next study, we'll resume Isaiah's prophecies in chapter 24. I hope you'll join us for that. Please like, subscribe, share, and choose to be notified there. And if you don't know how, I'll figure it out. So the number of people benefiting from these studies will grow. And I hope that you have studied uh, or benefited from these studies. I hope you'll continue to join us. And until the next broadcast, may the Lord bless you and increase your understanding of his blessed word.